Well, it was a routine performance from Anthony Joshua. Um, I'm someone who has kind of sat on the fence with regard to Anthony Joshua. Admittedly, he's looked good, but he hasn't really got me excited. I haven't fully bought into the hype train just yet. And having watched this fight, I'm left almost with more questions than answers. Just to give a brief breakdown, I mean, Jason Gavern was limited at best in what he attempted to do. It was very wide hooks that he was throwing. No sort of real attempt to get inside of Joshua's jab other than just throwing these huge, looping, inaccurate hooks. Um, I don't think Gavern offensively really landed anything on Anthony Joshua whatsoever throughout the course of their three-round fight. Uh, AJ was able to drop him several times. I think he maybe dropped him uh, four times in total before scoring a, uh, a knockout in the third round. Um, Gavern looked to be fully in his senses but didn't make the count and fair play to him, you know, having got up three times. The fight was going in one direction, no need to to keep getting up at that point, I guess. So, yeah, it's a fight largely controlled by Anthony Joshua um, from the jab. No sort of offensive capability from Gavern whatsoever. Now, the reasons I'm left with more questions than answers. Firstly, now I appreciate Anthony Joshua's coming back from a, a bad injury, etc. But this kind of fight isn't really the kind of fight that does answer any questions. I mean... To look at them in the ring, it looked like a boy against a man. I mean, Jason Gavern must have been four, five, six inches short and Anthony Joshua. His reach must have been nowhere near. I think Joshua had been training for this fight for like, you know, he'd had 12 weeks notice, whereas Gavern had, had one week. Uh, yeah, as if all the advantages weren't in AJ's favour to begin with. You know, chucking the fact that Gavern had little or no notice, you know, he didn't look in the best of shape in there. And he was literally sort of wildly swinging, no sort of real technique whatsoever. What surprised me about Anthony Joshua, though, was um, he said he had ring rust. But, you know, professional fighting at the top level, you don't fight every eight weeks. You know, he last fought in January. That's not too long ago. Um, January the 31st as well, I think. Uh, no, it wasn't January the 31st. It was earlier on in January. My apologies. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he... He was inaccurate. You didn't really see um, Jason Gavern taking too many clean shots. And the shots that did catch Gavern were kind of cuffing shots. You know, they weren't the cleanest of work. Um, you know, Gavern at times he was kind of bending, he was kind of ducking, and he was making Joshua look inaccurate. You know, Gavern was able to slip his sort of right hand cross quite regularly in the first round of the fight. That and that surprised me because uh, you know Jason Gavern. They were saying afterwards what an elusive, slippery opponent he is. I view him as quite sort of static, quite sort of limited. But he was able to kind of duck and weave in and out of Joshua's range, and you know miss a few right hands, made Joshua look a bit inaccurate. Joshua was able to kind of get him down a few times with cuffing shots and then sort of hit him when he was down, which was a, an unnecessary risk. And Joshua's done that before, and on both occasions, including tonight, he sort of played it down in the post-fight interview. But it's an unnecessary risk if you've got someone down and you're you know, really smashing them up in the fight to start throwing punches that could potentially get points stopped, get you disqualified, etc. He's lucky Gavern didn't make much more of a deal of it. So, yeah, I mean... For me, it was a so-so performance. You know, he stopped a sort of lower-level guy in three rounds, a guy who'd been stopped early multiple times by medium-level fighters. He didn't look overly accurate. Gavern was able to smother his work at times when, you know, Gavern got in close and held on to him. Uh, there was the punching on the when down thing that I thought was a real unnecessary risk that I didn't like. So I wasn't hugely excited by this performance. And I think Kevin Johnson will provide a really good test because, you know, they say saying Gavern is a slippery opponent. Well, you know, that's very questionable. But Kevin Johnson really is a slippery, experienced opponent with a lot of ring savvy and a lot of veteran skills. So if Gavern can kind of, you know, dodge in and out of Joshua's right hands, we'll see what, Kevin Johnson could do. And Kevin Johnson may ask one or two more offensive questions as well. So this fight, I reserve total judgment. 
few little areas of niggling doubt still remain for me with regard to Anthony Joshua. Maybe I'm being harsh. Let me know your thoughts. Were you impressed by his performance? Thanks for watching.